What's the funniest homebrew magical item that you've ever had in a campaign? It was a bag of animal feeding. It was meant to be a cute, make friends and charm critters item, but it became a moral and existential horror. As an action, you could reach into the bag and pull out an animal's favorite food. It would give you a bonus on your diplomacy style checks with animals and beasts. It was forgotten about for a long time until the party encountered a giant spider. Well, they didn't want to fight it, so they used speak with animals, I let it work, and reached into the bag to pull out the spider's favorite snack. And they pulled out a halfling. Oh, oh, what? Where am I? H how did I get here? Who am I? I? Oh, God, a spider. How do I know what that is? B b b but I don't know my own name or past. <laughs> and then the spider ate him. So as they went deeper and deeper into the lair of the spiders, they kept pulling out existentially terrified halflings as snacks for the spiders. Each halfling was a full being, had a personality, a soul could be raised and could go on to an afterlife. But they did not exist until the moment they emerged from the bag. They all had different outfits, different skin tones, different languages, and they were fully people except with no history or memories. Our GM gave us a greatly upgraded bag of holding. Most bags of holding have a weight limit and no air inside. Our upgraded version came with an entire tavern installed inside of it. Idle PCs would get stuck inside that tavern whenever the player couldn't attend a session. The bartender was a god who created the bag, but our characters didn't know that part. Apart from using the bag of holding for shelter and relaxation, we also hired a surgeon and had her move into the tavern, so we could effectively carry a battlefield hospital with us. Well, she had a terrible attitude, but she did her job well enough. I had a campaign arc focusing on protecting a town from a few powerful artifacts on the loose. One of them was the shiny book. It was a sentient notebook full of abstract and colorful doodles with the personality of a stoner art student. It expressed itself with huge, trippy, surrealist, or abstract illusions. Well, it wasn't that bad until the illusions ended and dissipated into huge clouds of tiny sticky glitter. The magical library was mad because the glitter messed with protective glyphs and allowed eldritch artifacts to escape starting the PC's quest. In my game, our bard is a bit of a businesswoman. She struck a deal with a powerful merchant to help spread his business around. In return, she got herself an item called the Turned Table. Now, what you're probably expecting is some kind of magical shop table or something that connects to his wares, right? Well, that's what I was expecting. It's not what she ended up with, though. Instead, the table, when used, turned into a massive animate table full of junk. Literally, just piled high with junk to the point it counted as a large creature. It even ate junk to recover lost hit points if damaged. Despite being a literal piece of junk, she still loved it and used it often. But boy, it was goofy to think about. The Fickle Mirror a mirror that showed the viewer whatever they wanted to see. If the mirror felt like it, of course. My players bought it off a hag who was having basically a yard sale before moving. If a creature looked into it, they would roll a d4. On a 2 or 3, it would be a normal mirror. On a 1, they would see themselves as distorted and ugly. And on a 4, they would see themselves as perfect and beautiful. The mirror had some other powers, too such as each creature getting it to ask it a question once per day, with the mirror having a high chance of distorting its view to show the answer to the question. My players used this to solve a puzzle or two. One of my favorite moments with the mirror was when my players first bought it. One was in the bathroom, so when he came back, the other players presented the fickle mirror to his character. His character was a skeleton. He rolled the D4, and it landed on a 4. The most handsome skeleton the world has ever seen. White Cloak of Privilege This pearly, 
white magic cloak does not get dirty, even if dragged through the mud. While wearing this magic cloak, you have advantage on all persuasion checks against town guards and low-level officials. Town guards have disadvantage on perception checks to see you committing crimes. Oh, God. It was probably the silver poop of safe teleporting. <laughs> what? See, in our Pathfinder adaptation of the 3.5 Savage Tide campaign, our paladin used a particular item, I can't remember the name, that worked as a set. A medallion to be worn by the Sentinel, and six earrings to be worn by the other subjects. The earrings would grant the Sentinel a one-time teleportation to the subject's position, and that would be fine and dandy until... Hey, Captain Fangbeard! A gift for you! Fetch! Our goblin alchemist, Captain Fangbeard, sees the little earring flying to him, and eats it whole. This had the table laughing for an hour, but it led to the creation of a bizarre magical item, the aforementioned Silver Poop. You see, Captain Fangbeard was always guzzling potions and other magical concoctions to power himself up, and this alchemical gut soup overcharged the earring eaten by our dearest little goblin baby boy, resulting in a bizarre magical item that allowed anyone who had one of the earrings or the medallion itself to use the magical item as a safe anchor for teleportation or plane shifting, empowering the spell and allowing them to bring others along. Now, the only downside was always teleporting to a narrow outhouse in Far Shore, where the toilet hosted a silvery, gem-emblazoned, stinky magical item. All in all, a very useful magical item, just thoroughly unpleasant. Just a few magic items, funny or not, useful or not. Scabbard of Holding! Could hold 20 weapons, great for a warrior. However, the scabbard may decide DM roll to produce the wrong weapon, secret roll odd even. The Singing Sword! An unpredictable attack weapon, great for defense. It would actually add 3 to AC when defending, but attack the wielder if they tried to attack with it. 2d6 plus 1 slashing damage. Mimic Bag of Devouring! It looks like a normal coin purse. However, anyone attempting to pickpocket it would get eaten by the bag, and the wearer of the bag would get half the experience of the person getting eaten. The Stick of Stupidity when you're hit with the stick, the person being struck loses one intelligence point permanently. On a nat 20, the person's intelligence drops to one. The stick does no damage and just looks like a stick from any wooded area. Headdress of Tasha's hideous laughter. Oh, God, no. On a successful con save, the wearer can cast the spell three times per day. On a failed con save, they cannot remove the headdress and need a priest to remove the curse to take off the headpiece. So, we had a monk who commissioned a party member to create an Amulet of Mighty Fists, a Pathfinder item that enhances unarmed attacks with a bunch of other properties on it. Because there was too much junk on it, the wizard failed their rolls and it wound up cursed. The randomly rolled curse caused it to function as another object. Oh, what was the item it functioned like? Guess what? An immovable rod! So the monk had a magic item blessed by the ability to, on command, freeze his body in place until somebody else removed the amulet. Shame we never got the opportunity to recreate the crushing trap scene from Final Fantasy IV. I was given a diamond sword. Yes, like the Minecraft thing. It was a long sword with a plus two to hit, did 2d10 plus two plus strength damage, had a feature that let it do fire damage once per initiative roll, and gave my dragonborn paladin dark vision because he was the only PC without it. I don't think it even lasted half a session before I sacrificed it to cast Revivify on a goblin NPC that we had picked up earlier that session. Okay, hear me out. In my defense, he was a really great bass guitar player. In session two, a guy was arguing with his brother and his brother turned into a chicken. <laughs> we investigated and found more angry chickens standing in piles of dropped clothes. We went after the idiot responsible, by which time half the town had turned into chickens. 
we found him in a cave. Turns out he and his brother ran a shipping firm in town, but the younger brother wanted to be an adventurer. He found this magical amulet, but A, didn't understand how it worked, and B, didn't realize it was damaged. An artificer had set up in a cave and had been commissioned to make an amulet of Featherfall, but couldn't get the right feather, and used a chicken instead. It didn't work. The customer we found dead at the bottom of the cave. The impact had somehow cracked the amulet, so now it randomly cursed people, turning them into chickens. In the end, we got the local dwarf blacksmith with a magical forge hammer to break it, and everyone became naked humans again. This was actually used by our DM to get us to respect magic in-game, in particular our two newbie players. And yes, if anyone recognizes this in some form, the Oxventure YouTube channel did this, but it was a potion brewed by a conman druid. The Boots of Greater Power! What is it, you might ask? Well, it's an item that takes a one to identify. Why is that difficult? Well, it applies a negative 19 modifier to your rolls. Now, can this be useful? Almost never. Did my players find a way? Yes. To put this in context, the boots didn't have to be worn, just touched. Just picking them up off a counter and putting them back on the table is a feat in and of itself. My players attempted to sell them by holding them with a handkerchief. They passed them to a shopkeeper, who is a reoccurring character in my campaigns. He is a dealer of joke items. Local adventurers go through dungeons and sell him the most useless items. For example, the helmet of contrariness, which, when worn or stood next to, will start to contradict everything you say. No, it won't. Yes, it already has. So the shopkeeper picks up the boots to examine them. I don't even make the party roll to convince him of the price. The conversation goes something like this. I would like to sell these boots for 2,000 gold. After abysmally failing an intelligence check to see if the number he's offering is higher or lower and struggling to even get the words out. N -n Nonsense! The highest I'll offer is 30,000 gold! The conversation becomes somewhat circular with increasingly ridiculous amounts of gold being offered, and it occurs to the party that the shopkeeper might actively be too stupid to even finalize the transaction. Belt of Pants It's a magical belt that makes an illusion of pants appear on the wearer. The party bard loved- oh Jesus Christ. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and if you'd like to keep the heater running and the lights on this winter, please make sure to join our membership. You don't have to, but you do get early access to videos and some outtakes, which are <laughs> quite chaotic and funny if I might say so myself. We love you all. Please be safe, happy, and healthy. See you next time. Bye for now.